Tom here from Warren Systems, and let's talk about PFSense 2.5 or PFSense Plus 2102. It's confusing, I got two version numbers to remember now. Anyways, the PFSense Plus or PFSense 2.5 Community Edition, whichever one you're using, the updates to this, should you update to it? What are some of the changes in terms of problems you may run into? And let's talk about some of those edge cases. The first one I want to address is the fact that WireGuard has been removed from the project. I brought this up in another video. And for those of you that haven't seen it, feel free to go watch that video because no need to address it again here. But anyways, not to get off topic. What is on topic is the release candidates that are coming up and the insight that I don't have into them. Uh, this has been coming up as well. Should I wait for the release candidate? Sure. Yes. If you have a problem that will be addressed in a release candidate, the answer is yes. Uh, they have a long list of issues that are being addressed in release candidates, but because I'm not a reseller or any insider that has some deep knowledge of what's going on inside of NetGator PFSense, I don't know when they're coming out is any better than you do. Now, despite people that seem to think that I am affiliated more deeply with them than I am, I am not. I am just a user, but I also happen to make a lot of videos on PFSense and many other topics for tools that we use on this channel. But let's get right back on topic here now that we've addressed this and talk about the edge cases. One of the big ones that's come up a lot is people who use privacy-oriented VPNs there are fixes for the upgrade. So if you upgrade from 2.4 to 2.5, yes, this does seem to break. The nature of it appears to be cipher changes that are made in these VPNs. So the new version of OpenVPN, some of the ciphers don't line up. And someone commented on this link here, like for NordVPN, that NordVPN has now updated their documentation to include PFSense 2.5. So there are, like I said, workarounds. Now, this is much more of a home user or... I would say maybe a tech enthusiast thing where they want to get around region lock for certain content they want to watch or just privacy oriented VPNs in general, those use cases. Um, so this is not as much something that really affected us upgrading our clients on the business side. And we have a combination of clients we manage. We have clients that are co-managed as in they have the internal IT and they contact us for support. This issue really hasn't come up and it's actually been from a user standpoint for people who are remote VPNing in, like the remote workforce users on OpenVPN, it's only been a couple instances where they were using a slightly older cipher that didn't translate to the new 2.5, change the cipher, redownload OpenVPN, problem solved, moving on. So that was a some of a minor problem, but of course, this is where there's a lot of noise of people complaining about it not working, but it is a lot of it around this particular thing here. Check the NetGate forums if there's a solution for the solution, what the problem you're running into. The one reason that we can't upgrade certain clients, this is a big one right here, and this is not resolved, not even currently in the release candidates. By the time the release candidates get to full release, this should be resolved, but this may be a reason that you don't want to upgrade at all. And it's a state matching problem with responses to packets arriving on non-default WAN. So if you have a default WAN, and you have a port forward on a non-default WAN, so a secondary connection with a port forward to it, and you have someone coming in on that secondary non-default WAN with a port forward to a device behind it, you have a problem. It will send the packets back out the main default route. So this is kind of an edge case. This is certainly not something everyone has. We had a client, one, that had this setting. So this prevented us from upgrading. As always, before you upgrade, be prepared, have a backup, be ready to roll back. So we just rolled them back. This is how we solved that problem. We rolled it forward and the problem was just, well, we didn't read this part because we didn't expect this problem. So we didn't find it until after we rolled forward, contacted NetGate, they linked us to this problem right here. So we rolled them back to the previous version. So this is something that if you have this case, yeah, don't upgrade. Um, this is definitely a problem that needs to be solved. And after the uh, update should be resolved once they get these, well, they're in release candidate now, but once they get to full release. Now, the next issue is something let's talk about how to do a workaround for, not a patch. This is the unbound problem. This has been a puzzling one because we did not experience this with our system. This is currently running a release candidate, by the way, um, that doesn't have the unbound problem completely fixed, but we're doing some testing in our lab here. But if you go here to service watchdog, you can add things under service watchdog to restart a service if it fails. Unbound, there's some bugs in it. I'm not exactly sure what the causes because a few of the clients we've upgraded, even though we've put this in just in case, there hasn't been an issue at all. Our system seems to do it once a week. Uh, we have it restarting unbound. 
but it doesn't do it every day. I've heard some people say it happens every hour to them. I have not dove into every detail. I know the easy solution is add a service watchdog. It'll restart unbound if it stops. It's a workaround. It's not the best workaround, but it's a workaround that will keep unbound up and running and uncheck the notify box if you're someone who doesn't want it to notify you every time a service fails. Uh, so far, that's the only other, the only two issues that we've really had, the default gateway one and the problem with unbound. But that's still that problem with unbound. As I said, some clients, it doesn't seem to affect at all. And in some of our clients, it's kind of irrelevant because, well, they have Windows domain controllers and in the business world, that's Windows domain controller living in there means Windows domain controller gets to be the DNS and DHCP. So it kind of went unnoticed in a handful of the upgrades we did for some of our business clients, just kind of the nature of things. They're not even using the DNS inside of here. So non-issue altogether for the business use case upgrade. Now, the, I will leave a link to all this. This is all the open bugs currently that are getting fixed in the release candidates. And there's you know quite a bit going on here. They have a change log over here. I'll leave a link to so you can see if these are some of the other issues you've had, specifically like the fixed the aliases. This is kind of a weird one. It's not one we noticed, but it is something I'll bring up because enough people have brought it up. Uh, if you rename an in-use alias, it doesn't properly go everywhere it's supposed to and rename that in the firewall. So if you named an alias, which for us, because we're upgrading in place, we're not resetting up a firewall and changing aliases all the time. Um, we didn't really run into this as a problem, but at least I'll bring that one up. There's a few other bugs and certificates um, that are definitely kind of annoying. And there's some specific cases where people had some problems with IPsec. We didn't run into this, but that's also because things like the IPv6 we're not using, and we just didn't have these particular scenarios. What we did do though, was we have in our own system here and a few of our clients that are running things like HA proxy that worked perfectly fine. No issues at all with HA proxy. Uh, we had no problems with let's encrypt automatically renewing certificates tied to HA proxy. We had no problems with free radius and open VPN using all the modern ciphers. So whether or not you should upgrade still comes down to, do you have those use cases? I feel though more the home lab users and the people who are really into some of those privacy VPNs are the people that seem to have some of the most problems and they have the most edge cases, especially people who passed, and this has come up with uh, some consulting we've done, a bunch of extra parameters in the extra parameters of OpenVPN. Those extra parameters may or may not work with the new version of OPN, OpenVPN. The biggest thing I can do is tell you to turn your log verbosity up really high, read through the logs and figure out, oh, I'm adding an extra function that was now, you know, deprecated function in the new version of VPN. That's where you can kind of trace through some of those problems, do your own testing, always do backups before you do this. So my opinion on whether or not you should upgrade is if you have business use case, it seems to be less affected, but do please read through all the different change logs that I'll leave links to, because that's ultimately that it depends, as I said at the beginning of the video, it depends on your use case. Uh, for us, most of our business clients just use the more basic functions of it, and that works perfectly fine. Those issues haven't really come up. Uh, we do have site to site with OpenVPN that works fine. We've had site to site with IPsec that works fine. We had just the one client who had things coming in on that other WAN and yeah, it was just easier to roll them back until that particular issue is resolved. So that one is the only one that we've run into that's an absolutely no go. The unbound one is more of an annoyance, but for those of you in business that you know have Windows domain as the middle as the master controller for all of your DNS, um, it's kind of it becomes a non-issue. It's annoying if it crashes, but um, it's not something that the end users have any notice of, so to speak. So up to you ultimately, of course, the decision is yours. I'm just here to provide information and point you in some direction on some of these things. I'm looking forward to the release candidates. Um, I'll keep playing with them in our lab here and when they go into uh, full production, but I wish I had a better thing than when they come. I don't have a date. I don't know or have any special insight. Uh, I'm like you, I'll be on Reddit discussing this. Please spend some time in the NetGate forums just reading through things. Sometimes that's how I find out about more of these problems if they're not problems I'm having as I just go through and spend a lot of time reading through there and look at some of the interesting use cases people have and some of the unique things that are using PFSense for. And uh, yeah, that's the all I really have to say about that, the other drama for WireGuard, which I know someone's going to leave comments on this video for, uh, leave them on the other video because that's where I actually discuss WireGuard. Uh, for now, WireGuard, it doesn't exist inside of PFSense as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it exists on other platforms. I still have a love for the WireGuard tool itself. Uh, it'd be cool when it gets back into the PFSense project. I mean, I have no idea when that was going to be. I am 
is in the dark, as all of you may be on that, except for maybe someone watching this knows more than I do, but um, it's, it's not me. Thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. To hire a Sure project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click on the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the descriptions of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thank you again, and we look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, check out some of our other videos.